the building itself seems to be its own sort of entity, like it has some sort of consciousness about it. There is so much dark history soaked into these walls and so much paranormal activity to go along with it. Oh, what was oh. that, dude? That was loud. Oh, oh wow. wow. Come here, do you feel this? It's like a blast of oh, cold yeah. air. Probably about 30 people died in every room that inmates would have lived in in here. Where are you? Where are you? We heard horror stories about this place. Was there a mean man here who mistreated people? Grab him. Quite honestly, this is a building that's filled with tragedy. Horrible, horrible things happened here. And I really doubt that anybody that lived here really wanted to be here. All right, Dave, we are back inside the Green County Poor Farm, also known as the Green County Alms House. Yes, we are here again for our third time to investigate. You know what they say, third time is the charm. This place really caught us off guard the first time we came here. This was one of our favorite locations that we investigated in the year 2020. Jesus Christ. That scared the shit out of me. Is that right there in that room? I was in inside that room. I think one of our favorite things about this place is how unassuming it actually is from the outside. It looks like a peaceful, Georgian revival style home. But once you get inside and you start digging into the history, there is so much dark history soaked into these walls and so much paranormal activity to go along with it. I'll kind of start from the beginning. Like when I was a kid, I used to come to this place. You know, they had events and stuff like that all the time. And I knew it was the county home, but I didn't know what that was really. I just thought it was a big house a bunch of people lived in. Um, and it really wasn't until I started working here that I kind of started to get the idea that this was basically an asylum. And you see the exact same kinds of stories, the exact same reasons for admission. From 1862 to about 1868, things were always pretty good here, but by 1868, that's when you start to see the place filling up really heavily with people. And I mean, they just couldn't keep on top of it. There are reports of the bugs and vermin so bad that you could literally, and these, these reports are coming from state inspectors, that you could literally scoop handfuls up off the floors and off of beds. In the early 1870s, I can't remember what year specifically, but the inspectors talk about a Scotchman uh, who was living here and his bed, he was lucky enough to have a bed, I don't think everybody did. His bed was so infested with bugs and vermin that he was sleeping on a pile of dirty rags in one of the hallway floors. You and I didn't get to experience it because we were down in the basement, but in this hallway, this is where Jason and Steve heard shuffling footsteps so clear and so audible that it sent chills down their spine. Yes. Again, let everyone know again that constant ticking sound you're hearing daily. Oh my God. Hello. Goosebumps. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hello. And you can hear them captured on camera. Very loud, very clear, very audible. Constant ticking sound you're hearing daily. Oh my God. Constant ticking sound you're hearing daily. I know he, when he and Steve heard those footsteps in here, they were both pretty shaken up about that. I remember Jason was, he was pretty freaked out and I think it took him back just a little bit because it was very loud. Yes. You know? And the first thing that I reacted with was just basically I wanted to cry. You know, started welling up with tears and I didn't really know why, but I'll never forget that. That was crazy. You know, Steve and I, I mean, you could tell we were uh, uh, shocked at the very least. Jason was doing his solo mission and when he was alone up here, he had the EDI plus meter go off just as he was trying to describe how to use the equipment. And at that moment, he caught an EVP of a child that said, I know. I'll actually light up for you. See, just like that, did you see it? 
See, just like that, did you see it? Which was very responsive, very relevant, and very creepy to think about, that someone that he couldn't see was watching him and listening to him and letting him know that they know how to use that. Institution. Whoa. Institution. Hmm. That gave me Angel. Trouble. Angel. Before the West Wing was built, which we're in the West Wing right now, there were 20 rooms for inmates to live in, and there were nearly 100 people housed in those 20 rooms, and they're nine by 13. That's pretty small, even by today's standards. So we have reports that say as many as nine people could be crammed into one small little room. And because of the overcrowding and the fact that you only had a steward and his wife and his daughter here kind of taking care of the place, in one year alone, there were 20 illegitimate children conceived and born here. And, you know, again, those kids and would have just stayed here in that kind of horrible mess until 1882, 1883, when laws were passed that said, you know, you couldn't keep kids in places like this. You don't have to be afraid of that anymore. Whoa. What was that? That was loud. I don't know what that was. I want to go look out the window just and see. Now, I remember as I was coming down here by myself to try and debunk or try to figure out what that sound was and where it came from, I walked through this area and I remember specifically and very vividly how creepy this hallway was. Just the energy. A little creepy. Like you're being watched from all sides. That's for sure. And as soon as I entered this hallway here, I could feel that I wasn't alone. Whoa. But as I walked through, I started to try different things. I would move chairs, I would open doors, I would pick things up and move them to try and recreate the sound that it was that we heard. Nothing rang true or even sounded close to what it was that Jason and I had, you know, because we were upstairs listening to what you were doing down here and none of it even rang anywhere close until you went into this last room down here. One thing that I was looking for on this floor was things with wheels that could move. And this was the last room that I came to, found this chair with wheels. And I thought, wheels, hard floor, might be something that could have caused the noise. So I grabbed it just like this and I pulled the chair, just like that. And I remember when we synced up the video, your eyes and Jason's eyes immediately lit up. And you said, whatever that was, that sounds like it. Yeah. Was that it again? Maybe. Dude. I think that's it. When I started really digging into the research here, we found uh, reports that were done by the state of Pennsylvania. They were done on odd number years from about 1870 through about 1915. And I believe it was in the 1875 report that we first see references to a woman who was housed in a cage and she was naked and she was living in there with another woman. And she was housed in a cage in the reports we see through the entirety of that time. And after doing a lot of meticulous research, I was able to identify her as Lucinda Coleman. She lived with her father and her brothers and sisters until her father died in 1850. A couple years after that, she's on the streets, she's homeless. Um, her brothers had basically just sort of abandoned her and moved to Ohio. And then in 18, I think it was 1863, she's brought here by the constable of Morgan Township because she was basically just being a nuisance. And she spent probably the rest of her life here confined in a cage and just nasty conditions. See, this basement is, isn't as bad because I actually feel short in here, which I am. Prisoner. Prisoner? That's kind of weird. That is really weird. This is a, this is the part of the building where they were treated like they were prisoners. Yeah. Died. <gasps> Died. No way. Do you remember us from last time we were here? We were communicating with you pretty well with a bright light that we had. 
Are you afraid to go in there and give Ryan your answers? If you are, can you light that up again for us? Say, I... Dude. When you left, I started feeling more that that was why. We're only here to tell your story. We're here to try and allow you to talk about what happened to you when you lived here. We're not here to hurt anyone. We're not staff. We're not the steward. We're just people like you. William B. Cage was a steward here. We don't know the exact years he was here, but it's safe to say from the mid 1880s through the early 1890s. By all accounts, he was just a bad man. Very, very bad man. First-hand accounts from inmates and witnesses we have of him beating inmates like crippled, disabled guys that couldn't work, you know, to the degree that he thought they should, but they weren't really physically able, beating them with sticks, with a cane, you know, getting them down on the ground and kicking them. Uh, he would have these lavish parties in the front part of the house where he'd invite the county commissioners out and he'd use all the food that was kept in the back of the house for the inmates to eat and they'd end up with, you know, gruel or something terrible, you know, the next day to eat. This is one of many rooms that they believe they would have locked them up and chained them to the wall, but this still has the shackle mount, which you can see in this room here. And it is confirmed historically that this is the shackle mount where they would shackle people to. When you think about the cruelty and the brutality to just pick someone up who's in need bring them here to this farm and force them into labor and to work. And then when they don't particularly obey by the rules, or if they themselves don't want to be here, they end up getting chained to the wall down here, beaten, brutalized, and it even led one man to take his own life. In 1891, uh, an inmate here by the name of Jimmy Stewart, he had been here since the 1860s, uh, he moved here with his wife and two daughters. It's, from what we can see, it looks like the daughters ended up moving out of here, but he and his wife stayed here. Jimmy, he ran away a few times, and by 1891, it looks like he just had enough of how bad life was here. And he walked out the front door of the building, up the hill to the orchard, which the orchard is also where they buried uh, people here. And he hung himself from a tree. Stuart Cage was told about it and he couldn't be bothered to call the sheriff right away so he let him hang up there for nearly two days before he called the sheriff to come cut him down and they brought him down to the house, had a quick little service and took him back up on the hill and buried him. This room is an area that gets a lot of interest during investigation because it's probably one of the most traumatic stories from the years of this building's use as a poor farm. There was a woman who was here. Um, she was brought here with her family, I believe. It was uh, her husband and her children. And she gave birth while she was here to a child. And unfortunately, the, the child did, uh, they believe, pass during the night. And they think that she decided, you know, I need to warm my child up. So she did place her child into the oven. The next morning, the smell was coming through the building and, and the inmates thought, oh, well, we're getting chicken or some kind of meat for breakfast, but unfortunately it, it was a child. A lot of people believe that the spirit of the mother may still be here, but also just residual energy. And who knows what we'll pick up tonight. In the ledger, you can count 746 deaths in the ledger, but only about a third of the entries are completed. And when you take into account uh, the number of people that lived here in the little over a century this place was open, which was well over 6,000, I would say that 746 number is probably, an accurate number is probably close to double that. So death was common, death was common. Um, on average, probably about 30 people died in every room that inmates would have lived in in here. As weird as it sounds, I really have to say that one, the building itself seems to be its own sort of 
entity, like it has some sort of consciousness about it. And it, it doesn't feel like the, the people that are still here are trapped here. It's almost like this is just their home. It's the only place they know. And I know over the last few years, as we've kind of fixed the place up and remodeled some rooms and stuff like that, you can always feel them watching you. Um, and activity always picks up then. And you can, you almost get the sense that they kind of like seeing their old home place fixed up and it makes them feel good. <laughs> but with that, I think it's time for us to gather the equipment, set up cameras and get ready to perform an abandonment session here at the Greene County Poor Farm to see what paranormal activity presents itself when the building is completely empty. Me too, because this place never disappoints and I'm excited to see what it has in store for us tonight. Let's do it. Let's do it. Doesn't go off, doesn't go off. This abandonment process for a decade has been a way for us to see if any paranormal activity occurs in these haunted buildings when no one's around to see or hear it. We've set up almost all of our equipment and cameras throughout the Greene County Museum. And while we leave for about an hour, we'll see if anything happens when the building is completely empty. All right, so we are getting ready to start our first session here at the Greene County Poor Farm, and we haven't actually began the investigation, any of our investigations here with the dungeon. One of the most, I would say, tragic stories of the entire Poor Farm is the story of how they were locked up in the basement and treated so poorly, and right now we have a camera rolling. We've got a bunch of equipment set up. We're going to start down there and see where we, see where it leads us. Let's do it. Let's do it. They also learned how to, or they also figured out how to turn off the grounds lights here at the poor farm. So it's the darkest that it's ever been yes. uh, on, the, on the property here. There is no lights shining in through the windows of any kind. And that makes it that much cool. That makes it that much more ominous to investigate in here. There is no light whatsoever. And we'll show you turning off the night shot. You can see Dave's camera there. But besides that, I'm going to pan this way. This is what we're dealing with. It is completely dark. <clears throat> yeah.
if there's anyone here, my name is Ryan and this is Dave. We're just entering this basement now. You probably remember us. We've been here before. And we came here to tell you to allow you to tell your story. We came here because we heard that people can still speak to you and you still make things happen. And we'd love it if you could show us that tonight. That's what we do. We travel around the country, around the world even, looking for places that are said to have people like you still living in them. We got some red lights that you can touch or a box in the hallway that if you walk in front of it, it'll play music. They're fun toys that we brought in hopes that you would speak with us or show us that you can actually use them. We're down here in the basement. You can come down and talk to us. Matt gave us permission to be here. We're friends with Matt. You see him all the time. Yeah. What was that? Same thing we heard before. Just like walking upstairs. Mm -hmm. On that west wing. Yeah. Who's upstairs? You don't have to be afraid to come out and out of your rooms there and talk to us. Look at this bright red light here. All kinds of cool colors. Can you try and touch that? Let's try the Vox here really quick, the ghost tube Vox. It's a spirit box program that uses the magnetometer. The magnetometer picks up on fluctuations in magnetic fields, and from there it determines where it sweeps to, depending on those fluctuations, so. To tell me who you are or why you're here. The bathroom. It said the bathroom. Cindy told us about how the bathroom gets locked on its own. Do you lock the bathroom? There's a box in, in my hand here that if you come up and get close to it, you may be able to use it to speak. We're not sure. This is just what we've been experimenting with recently. But we do have a lot of people that say relevant things. Can you tell us what your name is through that box? My name is Ryan and this is Dave. How long have you lived here? Around the world. What was the steward like here? Can you tell us what you thought of him? Are you still hearing it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what it is. What? It's an injured 
or overturned beetle type thing. Hold on, buddy. We're doing bug rescue here now. There you go. He's looking at me all crazy like, what the heck just happened? There you go. You're saved. Okay. We're heroes. We are, and we also debunked that sound we were hearing. It was that poor bug falling off of the step and then flopping around on his back endlessly. I was going to ask you if you wanted to try walking back that hallway. Is he going to look at me? I'm not sure. We're going to come in. Is that okay? <laughs> Oh, that was creepy. What did it say? I'm not 100% sure, but that gave me goosebumps. We're coming in. We heard horror stories about this place. And we're so sorry if you were subjected to the punishment and the torture and the torment that the uh, steward and the administration inflicted, wounded. inflicted upon people. There's a box out there in the hallway that you can answer our questions with. But if you're not down here, you ought to be passengers. Are they passengers? I think so. Six, seven, six. Hmm. And... So we're going to run out spirit box called the Paracom S and it's kind of convenient because you can mute the actual sweep when you go to ask questions and, and it can sweep very fast. <laughs> Is there anyone still in this room here with us? Can you come out and talk to us using this box in my hand? If you can, try and get as close as you possibly can and try and talk to me. I come in. The Vox is going nuts. Is it? What was that? Do you not like this thing? You know. That was super clear. You know. Yeah. We're sorry that you don't like it. We won't turn it back on again. We're coming back out. Our little friend is on the move, so. Now he's out there in the middle now, eh? All right, friend, where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let now let me out? Is that what that just said? I think that is what it said. It sounded like it said, now let me out. That's weird. Yeah. You can leave, you don't you're not locked in. You can walk right out that hallway there. Whatever door you're in, you can walk out. All the doors are open. You're not going to get in trouble. The mean man is not here anymore. The guy that's in charge of the place is much nicer now. We decide to spend a few minutes on the first floor of the West Wing to see if we can pinpoint where the footsteps were coming from. On our way up the stairs, 
were unaware that Dave's microphone battery dies. So for the rest of this session, I'll have to use the audio from Dave's camera so we can hear him. Man. Yeah, this was the men's ward. <laughs> Where should we go? Tell us what room we need to go to. Is Jimmy Stewart here? Jimmy, we told we were told your story and how tragic it was. They need our help. I don't know, it's too far away for me to make out. Dear Dear God. God. That was weird. Oh, wow. What? Come here, do you feel this? It's like a blast oh, of cold yeah. air. It's like static too, like my arm, my hair standing up. Are you standing right here in between us? We don't mean to crowd you out, but you can get close and use our energy if you want to. That was really <laughs> If you can hear us, can you go down to the dungeon, down to the basement? Passengers. Passengers. Again? It said, it said, it said that earlier. Can you go down to the basement and light up the stuff that's down there? Touch one of the balls? Make the noisemaker light up? Make the music box play music? It's all there for you to play with. Have a seat in the pew for me. We got a lot of activity out of this room the first time we were here. Someone was making all kinds of noise in here. Loud, startling, banging sounds. Jesus Whoa. Christ. That scared the shit out of me. Is that right there in that room? I was in inside that room. Can you go down to the basement and touch the box that's glowing red in three, two, one? Yeah, it was like a, a knock. Something hit that. What is that? That's a big, big old Bible. I don't think that's what it was. I don't know that was loud. Yeah, it startled the shit out of me. <laughs> what was Whoa. that, dude? That was loud. What was that, dude? That was loud. Isn't that one of the same? Yeah, that was quite, quite similar to those same noises that we were hearing. Mm -hmm. But we weren't in this room when we were first here. No, we weren't. I turned mine off. Okay, I'll uh, stay right here. <laughs> we're setting up for the Estus and we're having a lot of issues. During that last session, Dave's microphone at some point stopped working. We don't know at what point it is, but when we ended the session, we noticed that his microphone wasn't on anymore. So now he put a brand new battery in it and is trying to turn it on and it won't come on now so and it's pretty much a brand new mic pretty much
Is there someone here with me? If you're here, can you touch one of those lights? Did change in the battery work? Yes. So, we're going to do this with that experimental way. We're gonna try and see if during this Estes session, if any of the words that come through the ghost tube match up in any way with what's coming through the spirit box. So, Dave is gonna have the ghost tube there. Just as always, we're going to be recording the spirit box audio, and we do that simply because we want you to not only be able to immerse yourself into the experience and listen along with me as I'm listening to the spirit box, but also we want you to know that what we're hearing, what we're telling you we're hearing is actually what we are hearing, that we're telling the truth. So that's the, that's, that's the goal in paranormal research. We have to be as transparent as possible. And this way you know that what we're hearing is what we're hearing. And we are sweeping. We're good to go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so me and my friend Ryan over here are here to talk to you. My name is Dave. And of course that is Ryan. And he is using a box that you'll be able to communicate with. <clears throat> Can we start off with what your name is? Ryan. Run. Why would I run? Christopher. Well, thank you, Christopher. I asked what its name was. Christopher, can you tell me how old you are? Nope. Nope, that was pretty clear. Why not? Why can't you tell me? Knees. Uh, scared the living daylights out of myself. Switching frequencies. Was literally hearing nothing. Oh, yeah. Who are you? Respect. Hmm. Who are you in respect? I already told you what my name was. My name is Dave, and his name is Ryan. Do you remember that? Was there a mean man here who mistreated people? Grab him. Grab him? Grab who? There with me. There with me? Oh, I felt someone walk up to me. Mm. Male voice couldn't make it out. Christopher, are you here with us? No. 
I'm not. Can you please go down there and touch that really bright red light? Let me know that you're actually here. You gonna cry? Why? Man's voice. You don't have to cry. You don't have anything to be afraid of. No reason to be ashamed of needing a place like this to live. Where are you? Where are you? I hear you, Dave. How can I hear you? You can hear me? Call this a strange coincidence. But when I think I can faintly hear Dave's vocal tones bleeding through the deafeningly loud spirit box, I wonder how close he's standing. Before the words, where are you, can pass from my lips, the ghost tube beats me to it. Where are you? Where are you? I hear you, Dave. How can I hear you? Is this simply a coincidence? Or could our energy and consciousness affect the ghost tube as well? Let us know what you think of this sequence of events in the comments below. I can't make it out, but I think I hear your Ooh, man's voice. He's saying he can hear me, but I'm asking if he can hear me, and he says nothing. Do you like what Matt is doing with the building? He's trying to honor all of you by keeping this place in good shape. I think that's pretty nice of him. Hot. Anything relevant yet? Um, in the beginning there was some weird stuff. Where were you standing? Because I could, I felt like I could hear you from underneath the spirit box. Right there. Oh, right inside this doorway. But every time you said something, I very loudly was like, can you hear me? And you never responded. Inmate. Uh, inmate. Is that what it said? Yeah. Inmate. Oh, sh Okay, guys, so we just uh, split up. Ryan is down. Ryan is down in the basement in one of the tunnels. And I'm making my way over to the library. And it goes all the way to the front here, and it is connected by a tunnel, which you can see right here. And I am going to climb up in that tunnel. I already have a mail meter up there. I got the paranormal music box set up here. I'm going to go do a mini portal session back in this tunnel. Okay, so I got everything set up. This building that Dave is about to investigate used to be the boiler house for the county home. When the Historical Society Museum moved onto the property, they transformed it into a library, an archeology span lab. Just recently, an employee reported hearing a very loud man's voice when they were in this building alone. <sighs> okay. Whew. There was a, uh, there was a maintenance worker named Dave who was trying to trace a water line or, or an electrical line down here or something and apparently said he was crawling back through here just felt very unwelcome. So we'll see what happens. And it's also a good vantage point if there's footsteps up above me. I will hear To it. anybody who is in here with me, I have this box in my hand right here. And you'll be able to communicate to me through it as I ask you questions. Do you understand? Could you please tell me what your name is? Okay. 
I'm gonna set that right there for a second while I go and grab the mini portal. Hopefully that doesn't fall. Sitting literally on a rock wall. Who knows what this would have been used for, this tunnel. Definitely looks like it's even been filled in by dirt since then. And there are actual doorways that could have been entrances, like the one over here to my, to my left. It's a big entrance. There could have been a big coal boiler down here. Could have been a coal chute. There could have been people that worked down here that were residents or inmates. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. Matt asked us to come here because he thinks your spirit is still here. And he thinks maybe that you have a message. Is that true? Do you have a message for somebody? My name is Ryan, and I'm here to just talk to you. I'm here to visit with you. What do you, can you tell me what happened down here? <clears throat> can we start off with what your name is? Ron. Ron. Christopher. Wow. Well, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Some of these voices are going to have to be deciphered on review here because having trouble in the moment making them out. I really would like to give you the chance to tell your story and hear from you, hear what you have to say. Is that okay? There's a box out here that's in the hallway that if you walk in front of it, it'll play music. Can you do that for us, please? We've been trying to get someone to interact with our equipment, the little toys we brought all night. Yeah, it'll play music. Can you I think I'm going to try and go down this spiral staircase here into the lower half and maybe try my luck down here. Let's see if I can do this without. Success. Where did you go? here. Hello, sir. What brings you down here? Is there anybody down here who would maybe like to talk to me? My name is Dave and I I'm just here to try and talk to somebody. I've left a device with a red light on it upstairs do you think you could try touching that for me where'd you go oh shit. no way it's been that long it's only been 12 minutes that camera had it 
40 minutes of battery left when we started. It's only been 10 and it's already dead. <sighs> Damn it. At this moment, as I'm crammed into this tunnel crawl space, my whole investigation session falls apart. My camera set up outside the tunnel runs out of battery. The voices stop coming through the mini portal, and the overall exhaustion hits like a heavyweight boxer. So on that note, it's time to pack up and leave. Got my trusty light. Let's crawl the hell out of this tunnel. Here we go. <sighs> We're gonna have to be leaving the property here pretty soon so we can get back to our house. But we thank you for letting us into yours and trying to talk with you. We discovered the Green County Poor Farm almost two years ago. And every time we come back, we leave with new experiences and new evidence. What was that? Loud. Oh, what is that? That's one of the many reasons why this is one of our favorite places to visit. So paranormal investigations have been really quite a blessing for our museum here. This is a pretty large building. It's a pretty old building and it takes a lot to care and maintain for this place. And that is where a lot of that money comes from, is from, you know, groups that come here and investigate. So uh, if you are here investigating, know that that money goes to a good cause. It helps us keep this place up and running. So if you're interested in uh, booking a paranormal investigation at the Greene County Historical Society, uh, go to our website, www.greencountyhistory.org, and that's green with an E. And if you're interested, come visit us in the daytime. See the place when it's daylight. It's a pretty cool place to visit. And you're always helping us out, so we hope to see you. I'm sure as you remember when you were alive, you had no idea what was going to happen when you died. Neither do we. That's why we're here. We're just trying to figure out if there's anything beyond this. All right, well, I'm going to go. And if you did talk to me, thank you. And if you weren't able, that's okay. Either way, it's very much appreciated just for you to listen. So thank you again. <laughs>